This is what happens if you decide to have a walk in Florence. You are walking through a dark medieval narrow street and less than a couple of seconds later, ta-da! You might be surprised by one of the most beautiful, largest church of the entire world, the Duomo. We're going to be talking about the famous Duomo in Florence, but I do want to point out that the name of the Duomo in Florence is the Basilica di Santa Maria del Fiore, that's famously known as the Duomo, and it has the famous bell tower and just the structure which is so impressive from outside and from within. What I feel about the Duomo is if you get lost, you can go there. Like all roads lead to Rome, all è roads vero. lead to the Duomo. È so, vero, it's true. It's true. There was a writer contemporary, not exactly contemporary uh, of Brunelleschi, but I mean, a few years later that described the Duomo and he said, copre con la sua ombra with its shadow all the people of Tuscany. That means that all the Tuscany, just to say that the dome is visible from everywhere. And it is. <laughs> Italian. It's a very antique Italian. Yeah, it's very beautiful. beautiful. It is beautiful. It's just the coloring, the coloring of the Duomo and the structure is just amazing. It's and true. you were mentioning that they discovered recently, yeah, 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 they yeah. discovered footprints. Yeah, little, yeah, yeah, true. It's, true. it's live. It's and live. little graffiti signs with the little heart. Unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> we have many of them. Still uh, artistic graffiti. That's unbelievable. So they Things have not changed. Fortunately, now the students who came and climbed the Duomo, they left the chewing gum. Oh. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse than a signature. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so my God. That's I was very elegant, letters with the name, the initial, then the signature, and now we, we leave the chewing gum. One thing I want to share is I was reading several articles, uh, and one was in the New York Times. There are new ways to share graffiti at the Duomo. They have tablets, I think two on the way up and one on the way down, and you can leave a message, you can stylize, it, you could put in a background. So no more chewing gum on the walls or defacing the actual walls. And they're going to keep it in a website. So it'll be really cool. So the structure of the Duomo. It's unbelievable because here today they are studying how could it be possible that a man without the technology we have today was able to create such an ambitious project. First of all, the church is very old because of course, when we talk about the Duomo, the first thing we we think about is the cupola, but we have to think that the church was built in the 1200, the new church, Santa Maria del Fiore, and underneath there is even the oldest church, and there are underneath Roman remains from the second century uh, after Christ, so it's, it's unbelievable. So there are many levels. Anyway, the most of the church was done during the Middle Age. And then they had a big trouble. How can we cover such a huge hole? Because even the very first architect, Arnolfo di Cambio, the one who lived in the 1300, he thought about a covering with a dome. But, I mean, he, he lived not enough to find out how. So what happened? In 1418, there was another competition, exactly as the competition we talk about before for the doors. And again, the same two artists, Ghiberti and Brunelleschi, arrived together again. They were. They were in competition with each other, that's for sure. Again. And <laughs> this time, they began to work together. Nice. Uh, nice. Something, I mean, was wrong for Ghiberti. Probably uh, Brunelleschi wanted to work alone. Anyway, it's not clear what happened in the records. At the end, Brunelleschi was the only, only one architect left. And when everybody was wondering, how can we do such a giant dome? Because it was never, never done before. It was the largest church in the world back then. Now we have St. Peter. Wow. We have yes, Peter. that came after. Yeah, yeah uh, and never forget that Michelangelo was from Florence. Uh, Michelangelo, the architect, the architect who designed St. Peter Dome, was inspired by Florence. Anyway, back then Brunelleschi had a genius idea. He thought, 
how can I make something that is not too heavy, something that is not collapsing, something that could resist the century? So he thought about two doors, and that's the secret. There's oh. not just a dome that we see outside, but there are two domes growing up, one inside the other one, helping each other in the structure, growing up like a spiral, one inside the other one. It's a self-supporting structure, very light, because it's made out of terracotta bricks. And this is the reason why I don't like to climb. You remember? Uh -huh. I, I never climb with my tourists. Did you ever do it? Did you ever climb? I, I had to. I had to, but hundred. <laughs> steps of claustrophobic pleasure so yes, not yes. for me anymore yes because yes. of course the problem is that as more as you get close to the top as less space you have yes I all of that weight is that yeah. whole drone is on the outer circumference yeah yes the the white stripes that you see out of the structure I mean, in between the terracotta bricks are helping, of course, the, how do you say, the, the, heavy, the heavy of the dome. And on the top, otherwise the dome would open as a flower, there is a lanterna. There is that sort of white balcony that keeps the dome closed. It's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. The view, it's, it's spectacular. I have to say that the view, if you are one of the few lucky ones who climb all the steps, the view is breathtaking. So my own suggestion is to take a taxi and to go up to Piazzale Michelangelo. That is a panoramic square on the hills of Florence where you can enjoy the view of the dome from yes. far away and in the open air. Yes, that sounds good. I guess on top, when you climb the Duomo, it's the only time you're not seeing the Duomo, you're seeing the rest it's of the you, you see the bell tower, you see the tower of Palazzo Vecchio. Of course, you see the beautiful red tiles of the roofs. Uh, you see all the streets. It's, it's great. So, and actually, the bell tower is better to climb because there are windows. So. <laughs> Opened. No, it's tips of the day. If you have to climb something, if you really have to climb something, much better to climb the bell tower. Oh, I'll keep that in mind. I, <laughs> I climbed the Duomo many years ago. Once is enough. <laughs> Could you tell us the timeline? You mentioned the timeline of the church. It, when... it more or less, we don't have exactly, I mean, a date, but the, the most of the church was done uh, around 1260, 1280. Mm -hmm. The bell tower, instead, that is a structure close to the close to the church, but separated, was begun by Giotto, another exceptional painter of the 1300. And also, the bell tower was finished in the 1300. Then the dome was finished in the 1400, actually 1436, so to wow. be precise. Uh, and the facade is new. The facade, the front of our church is brand new because they finished it not even 200 years ago. So the facade was completed in 1887. That for us is new. It's <laughs> unbelievable because I, I never thought about that. I, I mean, I realized that later on, but when I first saw it, I just thought, you know, yeah, they put this all together, you know, but that's yeah, impossible. But because the style, the style is very uniform. They did a great job because you don't see the difference in between, I mean, the part made in the 1300 and the part made two centuries ago. Just when you double check as an art historian, you look and you, you focus on the color of the marble, you find out that the facade is off white. In the white marble of the facade, the Carrara marble, it's really sparkling, shining. The one on the side, so the oldest part, is a little bit dirtier because it has been there since, I mean, 700 years. So there was a white marble. Was yeah. it in the front or just on the sides? And no, I say that the white marble, actually there are three colors that you find in the most of the Florentine churches. And it's the white Carrara. The Carrara is the most famous, charming Italian marble. And it's coming not far away from here. It's uh, today, two hours driving. Back then was five months of hard work. Carrara right. are the mountain not far away from Luca. So today, very close. But still today, the Carrara marble is very popular. I mean, if you wanted to make a luxury bathroom. I, I have Carrara marble. Oh, so you know bathroom. what I'm talking about. It's expensive, <laughs> but today it's easier. You can make a call from the other side of the world and in a few weeks you can have what you want. Anyway, so the white is the most beautiful one. Then we have a few sections of green. 
as a dark green. And this is known as Serpentino. Serpentino. Uh -huh. And it's coming from Prato, a small village not far away from Florence that back then was famous uh, for, for this specific uh, color of marble. And, and sometimes you see a few sections of pink, a light pink. And yes. this is coming from Maremma on the seaside, on the, on the coast of Toscany. Wow. Wow. Now, the, the funny thing is that many, many centuries after they began with the work, the dome is still incomplete. And from this point of view, you can see that at the bottom of the dome, there is something like a white balcony in between the round of the window exactly, and the red of the tile. That was the only part that was begun, uh, according to the legend. And of course, I don't know if it's true or not. This is just a legend. But I think it could be possible. Michelangelo, who was a very competent artist, looking at the work begun by the poor Baccio Dagnolo, that was the name of the very unlucky guy who did the job and uh, say what have you done a cricket's cage uh, because he said it was too busy to how do you say too busy too 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 many things too much things uh, and, and so i don't know if it's for this reason or not but if you look at the other seven sides you can see the simple brown bricks you can see that there's no marble it's the only part of the church that was not finished is that the white balcony that you are pointing uh, out right now? That's that's the cricket cage. And then, I mean, getting closer, you see that the other sides are uh, simply brown. Wow! Yes, I thought I thought I thought better than nothing. Yes, <laughs> but I course, like it personally. But what can but, I? But of course, we are not Michelangelo, so yes, we cannot. Of course, we're not Michelangelo. <laughs> so we cannot understand, maybe. <laughs> Maybe this was just a legend and there were economical reasons why they never finished. Who knows? Yes. I just want to go back that you mentioned that Pisano worked on the bell tower. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier. Actually, Giotto arrived till the first level of the windows. Giotto made the entire design of the bell tower, but unfortunately he died. And so Pisano worked after him. And yeah. then Francesco Talenti saw three different artists who in different periods, I mean, still in the 1300, we are talking, they, they finished uh, the bell tower. The main idea is by Giotto. And uh, Francesco, can you repeat yeah. that? Talenti. Talenti was the one who actually finished the top part of the bell tower. Oh, cool. It's so beautiful. I have to of course, everybody knows Giotto as a painter. I mean, for the one who, who come to Italy, the first thing you think about are the frescoes in Assisi, in Santa Croce, uh, I mean, the painting in the Uffizi Gallery. But of course, Giotto was a great architect too. Less known as an architect, but look what he did. It's amazing. And I love that about, you know, the Italian Renaissance and the idea of multifaceted and doing different things. Exactly, exactly. But because the training had to be complete back then. They had to learn how to paint, how to sculpt, how to work as a goldsmith, how to mix colors, uh, music. Music too was included in the training of an artist of the time. And just at the very end, after seven years of the very first training, they could choose if they prefer to be a painter, if they prefer to be a sculptor, if they pre prefer to, to be just assistant forever right. of their masters, if they were not too talented. Amazing. It's just beautiful to talk about this beautiful structure and Florence. Look how wonderful is the, I mean, the shape of the dome with the shape of the hills around. It's a perfect mix of nature and, and human hands. It's, it's made to be in the center of Florence. There's not another place that could surround it better. The Duomo, don't you think? Oh, yes. Form, the shape, and the natural light in Florence is just yeah. spectacular. There's nothing light. Uh, there's that movie, well, it was a play, and I guess a book first, and it was called The Light in the Piazza. I think it was from the 1950s, but a very <laughs> it's really fun. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's about a young couple falling in love. This, As an artist, I can say there's nothing... Well, Barcelona is pretty spectacular, too. Yes, we have to say the light is there, but Florence... And the light there is even stronger, I have to say. 
but of course I'm partial. <laughs> I'm partial. If you come to Florence in summertime, it's horribly hot. There are 40 degrees, but there's nothing like, I mean, the sunset, I mean, the warm light of the end of the day in summertime reflecting on the white Carrara marble. It's hard to describe. You have to see. I mean, you you know it. Know it I'm, I'm talking about the one who doesn't know yet. You have to come and take a look with your eyes. It's definitely worth going, taking a tour with you and seeing this beautiful city. You just have to keep coming back and back. And people who have watched our film on the baptistry just... Uh, really love it, want to visit. Some say they've learned, they remember from when they were there, they'll need to go back. And beautiful. This is beautiful. And, and mm -hmm. how they never thought to take a tour. It's just very special too, because you get that little inside view. I can't wait to get back there. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Un bacio grande, Clara. Ciao, ciao. A presto.